Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Approval Test, and today we're going to get started using InUnit, which is one of the many .NET frameworks for doing unit testing. So here we are in Visual Studio, and if you're going to use InUnit, there isn't a special project type. It's just a regular DLL. So we're going to have a class library here. InUnit. So here we are. And the first thing that we're going to have to do is add in unit to our library. So I'm going to go to NuGet, do a search for in unit. You can see there it is. And then the next thing we're going to have to do is add approval tests. You can see it right here. And I'm going to install that. And this is going to, in the end, add three things to our references. The first is right here, the in-unit framework. That's so we can actually use in-unit. And then approval tests, so we can use approval tests. And approval utilities is something that approval tests uses, but also stuff that you might want to use in your actual production code. So when I'm using in-unit, I'm usually relying a lot heavier on stuff like ReSharper. First thing we have to do is decorate this as a test fixture. That tells us that this class is actually a test. And then inside of here, we're going to make a test method. Now, that's just going to be decorated with test attribute. We got to give this a name. Um, we're just going to test hello world. And within unit, you're usually going to use something like assert dot r equal, 1 is equal to 1. And now I'm going to use resharper to run this. And you can see here that it's successfully passed. So now I'm just going to convert this over to an approval test. I'm actually going to change it to a string because 1 equals 1, I'd probably still use an assert. But if I had something more complicated like, hello world. Welcome to approval of tests. You can see this is going to be more annoying to duplicate twice over. And so instead of doing an assert, I'm going to do an approval dot verify. So I want to verify that this is the text. And when I do this, I'm also going to decorate up here with a use reporter usually a type of diff reporter. We'll talk about reporters a lot more in upcoming episodes. So now when I run this, it's going to fail. And you can see up here that approval test uses the golden master version of verification. So over here, I have the, what has previously been said, this is okay. And you can see it's empty because at this point, I've not said anything has been okay. And then you can see what you've actually gotten. And if you like what you got, which I don't, because this slash r slash n was supposed to be the other way around. So let's go back and actually fix this up. You can see here this slash r slash n was supposed to be the other way around. This was supposed to be a line break. So I'm going to change that, run it one more time to see that it actually is what I want. You can see now that it is. To approve it, I'm just simply going to use this whole file to the other side saying that this is now my master file. This is what I want it to be. Now that it's approved, I can rerun it and you'll notice it does not pop up because it only pops up on failure. Great. I can also change this and say, hello world. And again, it's still using the golden master paradigm. So when this fails, it's gonna pop up and when it pops up, it will highlight exactly where the problem is, right? So it used to say hello world with a comma. Now it's hello world with the explanation mark. And again, I now am given the choice of either reverting, saying, hey, this is what I actually wanted. Please keep it that way. Or to move forward and say, hey, this new thing is actually what I want. Let me reapprove it, save it. Now, when you're using approval tests, you'll notice if you go to your solution, refresh and show all. Alongside here, 
alongside here, there'll be two files that occur. This class one hello world.approved.txt and class one hello world.received.txt. This is because the last time I ran it, it failed, as you can see by this red bar. If I was to run this again, go to my Solution Explorer and refresh again, you'll notice it only keeps the approved file. And this approved file, you're going to need to check into your source control. You should never be checking received files into your source control. Those are always temporary files because the test has failed. And before we leave, I'd like to highlight one of the many contributors to approval tests. This is Dan Gilkerson. He's not even really a contributor. He is the person who co-created approval tests with me way back in 2008 when we started thinking about how can we test richer, more complex objects and do it in a way where we kind of knew what we wanted, but we weren't sure how to describe it so easily when we were using the regular testing frameworks. If you have questions, you can always tweet me uh, with the hashtag approval tests. I monitor that quickly and will respond promptly.